Welcome to StarCast, a show about tarot, divination, and all things mystical. StarCast is a celebration of StarCon, the Southeastern Tarot Artist and Readers Conference. I'm Amy Mauser, and here's your host, Christiana Gaudet. Thank you, Amy. Welcome, everyone, to StarCast. Today, I am delighted to have as my guest, Nancy Hendrickson, otherwise known as Nancy Sage Shadow. Hello, Nancy. How are you? Oh, hey, Christia. I am doing great, and I'm so happy to be here. And I can't wait for StarCon to come. Can we, like, hurry time along? <laughs> we are all looking forward to it. I know. And, you know, one of the things that is true about these kinds of conferences is it causes us to meet people. And you are one of the people that I did not know and did not know about until you reached out to me and asked to be a StarCon presenter. So even though the first StarCon hasn't happened yet, we're already making new friends. I know. And you know, uh, I actually have a couple of Florida friends on Instagram who have said, I'm so looking forward to meeting you in Florida because they're going to StarCon. So that's like so cool. You know, the internet has made all this possible. For us to meet so many people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it is one of my favorite things. I mean, we can complain all day long about the problems of social media and those problems are real. Oh yeah. But the gifts yeah. are totally. significant. Absolutely. And they so, are. Nancy, you've got some really exciting things going on, not the least of which is your new book coming out soon. <laughs> Tell us about it. Uh, I am so thrilled about it. You know, I've written many books over the course of my life because that's, I'm basically a, a full-time writer. But this is the first book I have absolute joy in coming out because it's a really from the heart book. It's called Ancestral Tarot. It's it's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble for pre-order and it will drop on March 1st. So it will be a Pisces baby uh, coming in next year. And it's really all about the kind of two tracks we take through our ancestral life, which is we have ancestors we knew and loved and missed terribly. And we have ancestors who created really problematic patterns that just come down through the generations. So the book covers both. And I also talk about people who are adoptees. Because sometimes in, in the world of family history, adoptees say, I, I don't have any clue who my family is. And, and what I will always say is, but your family knows who you are. So you can still work with them. And in, this book is specifically for using tarot to do ancestral work. Wow. Yeah. That's deep. You know what, this book, I, I'm i really fortunate. I had a very happy family, except for a lot of deaths very early in my family, but I've always been really supported by family. But just writing it triggered so much stuff. It's like, I, I would sit here someday in tears as I was writing because family stuff is hard stuff, good or bad. It's hard stuff. Yeah, that is um, that is fabulous. Now, who is publishing your book? Wiser is publishing under the Red Wheel uh, imprint. Yeah. They are doing a lot of good tarot stuff recently. You know, they are a great company. As uh, my editor, my editor is Judica Ellis, who writes a lot of witchcraft books, mm -hmm. and she is a fabulous editor. And, and she told me it right up front: we're small. We're slow, but we're really good. And so, you know, those things work for me. And Wiser's putting out some amazing books. They really are. And I, I had the pleasure of uh, being roommates with Judith for a gathering a couple Did of years ago. Wow. And she she is just wonderful. I'm, I'm sure she was wonderful to work with. She was great to work with. I was really lucky. Yeah. Absolutely. So 
When you reached out to me uh, asking if you might be a presenter at StarCon, you had mentioned this book coming out right. and had asked if you could do a presentation, I, I guess, related to the book. Right. What can you tell us? Can you give us a little sneak no. about what we'll be learning? A teeny sneak preview. Uh, I'm going to talk about identifying and beginning to heal family patterns. And the little sneak peek I can say is you may have a family pattern that says, you can't buy that. We don't have enough money. You can't go to college. We can't afford that. And something that people don't realize is that black mentality may have been a real thing four or five generations ago. It could have been an immigrant from Ireland who didn't have a dime. And every penny was that critical. But unfortunately, that story has been lost to time, but the pattern has just continued generationally. And that's one thing I really want to talk about during the presentation at StarCon. Wow. So generational healing is really what we're talking about here. Huge. You know, I think I look at my own family and I, you know, I kid because I'm a Virgo and perfectionism is kind of a Virgo thing. But I look back at the family that I knew, um, you know, back to my grandparents and one generation beyond, they all were perfectionists. And that was a generational pattern. You didn't get praised for coming home with all A's. You were expected to come home with all A's. And so it puts an incredible pressure on you. And once you realize is generational, then you can start working with ancestors further back who didn't do that and doing communication via tarot. So there's huge healing that can be done. Wow. So what I'm gathering here is that in your work as a tarotist, you are doing some things that are groundbreaking, some things that are really healing, and some things that are a lot deeper than, you know, many people might see as what we what we use tarot for. Uh, talk right. to me a little bit about your journey with tarot, how you came to it, and how you came to this very deep and unique and healing way of working with the cards. You know, I started my metaphysical life as a healer. And so healing has always been my prime consideration. And I really want, and I've done genealogy most of my life. I've done tarot most of my life. And this was my opportunity to mash up and say, out of this mashup, is there healing available for people who may not know genealogy? They may not know history. They may not know anybody past their parents. That's okay. Because tarot can open that door. And but my, you know, kind of my bottom line through it all is I want you to be happy. I want you to live your best life. And let's see how we can work with the ancestors to make that happen. Because your ancestors want you to live a good life. I mean, you are their living progeny. You have the DNA, their DNA in your, in your veins. And, you know, they want you to do well. So uh, if I can help in some way with that, then I'm a happy camper. That is that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So, of course, as we've said, we are certainly looking forward to Stark. Can you say a particular thing that you are specifically looking forward to for January? Sure. Well, meeting my Insta friends huge. Uh, uh, as a total side note, visiting my Florida brother, but that's a whole other thing. Um, you know, I've known, I've been doing tarot over 30 years and I've known like James Wanless and Mary Greer from way back before anybody knew them. And I, I met Mary probably 30 years ago when she came to San Diego and, and we sponsored her to do a workshop. But, um, you know, most of these people I've known for many years, but I've never really met. 
So I'm really looking forward to meeting the other presenters. And I'm really jazzed about meeting the people who are going to be there. Fabulous. You know? Listen, and that's part of it, you know? And of course, in the age of COVID, we're still making decisions about how that's going to be, yeah. how what it's going to look like. But the fabulous thing is that StarCon is not a one-off. It is an annual yeah. event. And uh, I am hoping you will be part of the StarCon family for many, many years to come. Oh, you can't, you can't get rid of me, so... No worries. <laughs> That's fabulous. So I wanted to ask you if you would be willing to share. Uh, this is your first tarot book, Ancestral Tarot. Okay. But I'm just getting a feeling, since you are so prolific as a writer in general, that it's not going to be your last. Is, is, is that, there's my psychic prediction. It's not going to be your last. What do you think? Oh, I have at least three book proposals in my head. And when I wrote the Ancestral Tarot book and was doing one of the spreads, one of my ancestors way back said, you're going to write seven more books after this one. And I said, you're nuts. Because, you know, a book, it, it's not a quick I can't, you know, you can't turn a book out in a month. I can't anyway. And so, uh, yes, I think there are going to be many more tarot books. Uh, and they won't, they won't all be on the ancestral tarot line, but they will all have as an underpinning healing of some kind, whether it's past life, whether it's tarot as a tool for healing. Uh, you know, I'm not 100% sure, but I know that's the road I'm going to walk probably from now until the end of time. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. So let me ask you, since you are such a successful writer, and of course, I'm struggling through book number three, trying to get that done. And I, I you know, I had a teacher many, many years ago who said, if you're going to be a good tarot reader, you have to be a tarot writer as well. And I think a lot of us struggle with that. You know, maybe we can put together a blog post, a newsletter, whatever. But a book is an undertaking. What advice do you have for we struggling tarot authors? You know, there's another thing in the writing world that says you can't be a writer unless you're a reader. Because... You know, there are no original ideas. I mean, we all kind of take pieces from everybody else. But in terms of writing a book, now, I stray from Virgo-ness in many ways. I do not stray in this way. And that is I have a very precise outline. And every single day I look at my calendar and it tells me what chapter I am working on and what section of the chapter I'm working on. I, I get that finite when I write a book. So um, I, it's not a willy-nilly thing. I like knowing every single day I get up, I look at the ch a calendar, and I know what I'm doing that day. That, you know, that makes sense, and that just brought me right back to fourth grade, which was the, <laughs> <laughs> the first year that we had to actually write a paper, and at that point, it was like a six-page paper or something. Outline. You, the first time outlining, learning outlining. And yes. I remember saying, where am I ever going to use this in real life? Lo and behold, <laughs> here we are. Yeah, yeah. Well, I did not. I, I, I took that one to heart. And, and I am organized. And you know, if you're self-employed, if you're not organized, you're in deep trouble. <laughs> you know, you have to really watch your time. That's just the life of anybody who's self-employed, whatever profession they're in. Sure. That's absolutely true. So let me ask you, I know you 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 do some fun things on Instagram. Your your primary <laughs> social media presence is Instagram, isn't that right? Totally, yes. So tell us how we find you on Instagram. Oh, and tell us some of the fun things you're doing there. Okay, so on Instagram, I'm Nancy Sage Shadow. And that's because of my website is sageandshadow.com. And I'm just getting ready to write something about that. So check back in a day or two. Um, 
I, if I, I'm not a label person, so I don't like to call myself anything, but if I had to put a label on me, it would be a panentheist. And that is somebody who sees the divine in all things. So on my daily walks, whether it's a box sitting on top of the trash or a front porch gargoyle or a bee or, I mean, no matter what, there are messages coming in all the time. And so I do a a few times a week on Instagram, I do sidewalk oracles and it's just pictures of something I've taken on my daily walk and kind of the messages I've heard from that. And I know people love it because that's kind of how they refer to me. Ah, Sage and I mean, a sidewalk oracle. I know who you are, a sidewalk oracle. Um, but I do a lot of tarot. But, you know, I'm not a, a draw a card for the day Instagrammer. Mm-hmm. I am a draw a card and say, why did the artist do this? What, what's, what does this really mean to me? So I am much more of a questioner than an answerer. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. <coughs> Excuse me. I love that. I love that because I think very often the value of tarot is in the questions it gets us to ask ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. It sounds like you're facilitating that. So do you have a favorite deck that you're working with right now? You know what? My favorite deck is whatever I'm working with on that day. I, I really don't. But I will tell you that my oldest decks and that I will go back to time and again are the Voyager Tarot by James Wanless. Only because I've had it for 30 years, I worked with James for almost a year looking at every single symbol on those collage, on that collage deck. So I know that deck so well. But another really go-to for me is Robin Wood. And again, because I've used it for so many years, uh, I do love those. But my current everyday deck is Mystic Mondays. Uh, you know, it's it's minimally illustrated, and I wouldn't recommend it for somebody who's new because there's not enough, there isn't enough of a picture if you're new. If there's just four of something, that, that doesn't tell you anything. But if you do know tarot, it's a beautiful deck. I... Uh... I've just that that deck has just come across my radar and it's on my wish list. It is so okay. pretty. It's bold, bold colors. It's really a beautiful deck. But on this day, on today, I have the uh, Radiant Weight is the deck I'm using today. Perfect. And I've got my trusty workhorse of the moment, which is the Smith Weight that comes in the little tin. Okay. Um, so let me ask you: Do you venture outside of the way sort of inspired world. Do you ever do Crowley? Do you ever do Marseille? Do you venture into any of that? Uh, Marseille makes me nuts. I I look at a Marseille card. Uh, In the San Diego Tarot meetup, one of our members is, that's all he does is Marseille. And I'm constantly saying, what's that card? Is that four of wands? What, nine of wands? I cannot read that. I cannot read that. But I I try my best to read Lenormand, mm. and I am getting better at it. I can't say I'm very good at it, though. Uh, you know, I have a number of Lenormand decks that I love, and yeah. when I go to a class or I'm hanging out with some people who work with those cards, I get really inspired and really excited because as a fortune-telling tool, it is so amazing, and we're going to be... You know, we've got a, a few uh, really great teachers coming to StarCon. So there's going to be a real opportunity for us to learn this system at StarCon. But I have to say that I feel really handicapped because I am such a, I'm, I'm you know, the way it was explained to me once is that Tarot works in analogy and allegory, and Le Normand is literal. It, yes, it, and I almost every tarot reader I know has problems because we don't typically say, "Oh, I just picked up the King of Cups." 
oh, there's a guy sitting on a rock and he's got a goblet. I mean, we just don't read that way. And and Le Roman really makes you read that way. Right. And it's it's very difficult for me to do that. And, you know, on the lazy factor, I do not want to draw 36 cards to answer one question. <laughs> you know, but I, I know some people who really do both very well and switch back and forth right. between the two. I'm not uh, maybe one. even in the same reading. Really? And so far, I'm not that. Me neither. No. And uh, no, I, I will use Oracle sometimes if I just want to throw in a clarifying card. Uh, but not often. Yeah. So and, and I am working on my own my own deck just for me. And so I have 40 cards so far. I don't know where I'm going with it, but they're just the uh, pictures I've taken on my everyday walks. And so they're just the energy or the spirit of place. So that's that was I just put pictures on the back of blank cards and uh, pictures that very much relate to San Diego sailing ship. Um, so I've been playing with these every day just to see, are these really viable as a reading tool? And so far, so good. Uh, I'll I'll let you know when I do when I do more. So I I have noticed about you, you really like taking pictures with your phone. I love it. I am I have been a photographer since I was a teenager. That has been my A one hobby after tarot and genealogy. Yeah, yeah. And so you know, here you are doing the sidewalk oracle. And now we see that you're also going on these walks and taking pictures of things that are becoming your oracle. That's correct. That's true. And so what I'm learning about you, Nancy, is that for you, the world really is an oracle. The world is an oracle. The world is an oracle. And it's just how much do you want to hear when you're out it, it can be overwhelming. And so you really need to filter, but the world is an oracle. If you, I, I was walking with a friend a couple of days ago and we walked by this incredible hibiscus bush and it was just, you know, flowers love to be photographed and oud nod over. And I stopped and it's like, you are so beautiful. And the flowers just love that adoration, but, and, and they will love you back which is different than, you know, a beer can in the street has a totally different message. But the world is an oracle. Uh, that is that is beautiful. So I know you gave us uh, your URL a few minutes ago, but I'd just <laughs> like you to give it again because I want everyone to check out your website and, and check you out to get ready to take your class at StarCon. So go ahead. Uh, it is sageandshadow.com. Beautiful. So in closing, uh, we have this thing we do when it, it so happens that uh, the person I'm uh, visiting with on StarCast is also a reader. Okay. Close with a card for StarCon. So here's how this works. Okay. We're each going to shuffle. We're going to think about StarCon 2021. Okay. And we're each going to pull a card to do a reading for the inaugural event. Okay. StarCon 2021. So, and I'll let you go first or not go first. You get to say. So. Okay. Uh, oh, interesting. I am using uh, Nancy's Oracle. Oh, cool. <laughs> so this is... Uh, I'm going to see if you can see this. Can you I see can this? see it, but make sure you describe it, too, for the people. Okay, the it thing. is at the ocean. It's at, it's that beautiful old Pacific Ocean across the bay from San Diego, and there are seabirds, and I took this on New Year's Eve day. And there's a little backstory, so thank you for letting me tell it. Sure. Um, I... I, I get healing requests a lot throughout the year. And I have a whole big bucket of polished stones. 
And I just, if I get a healing request, I just reach in, randomly pull one out, use it as a focus point for distance healing. And then I put it in a, in a bowl with the Buddha. So on New Year's Eve day, every year, I go to the beach at Coronado and I put all the stones back in the ocean. And this picture was taken right after I put all the stones back in the ocean. So for me, this card is saying something about the Starcon inaugural is going to be such a relief, not relief, release for people. I think it's going to be a all the stuff you built up during the year. And God knows this has been the year of buildup. Yeah. Starcon is going to offer everyone the opportunity to release a lot of the crud that we have been holding thanks to COVID all year. And I probably into the next few months. Um, so the card of release is the card I drew. Beautiful. So I drew the 10 of cups. <laughs> nice. So for me, that's so much about family. Remembering that we are a family. You know, the first conference I ever went to was a uh, an ATA, American Tarot Association regional conference in Albany back in the 90s. And I was just a young tarot reader then. And I remember thinking it was the first time that I had been in a space gathered together with people who looked like me, talks like me, were like me. Yeah. And so this idea of being with family and recognizing that you know, even though we come from all over the world, even though we use different tools, we are all part of the same family. We are indeed. And I couldn't resist pulling a card from the Radiant Weight. Mm -hmm. And I got the Page of Wands. And I love this because I thought, oh, wow, if you're new to tarot or pretty new to tarot, oh, is this going to light the fire under you to learn so much about tarot? <laughs> So I love this. I, I, you know, um, I am a perpetual student, so I love the pages. So. Wonderful. Yeah. Nancy Hendrickson, Nancy Sage Shadow, I want to thank you so much for being thank my you. guest on StarCast. Thank you. And uh, we're all very excited about your new book, Ancestral Tarot. And uh, thank you. very excited about the class you'll be teaching at StarCon. Oh, me too. I can't wait to be there. Thanks, Christiana. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks for joining us for StarCast. For more information about our annual conference, visit us online at starcon.com. That's S-T-A-A-R-C-O-N.com. We are looking forward to seeing you in January.